Robertson. Oh, she's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson. Okay, I am Jeannie Robertson, and we're here today to have a heck of a lot of fun. And we're on my back porch here in North Carolina. I guess this is the 22nd week when we said, we'll just do these little shows till the COVID is over. And it looks like we're going to be doing them a while. But if you're having as much fun as I am, well, we might as well go ahead. And thanks, everybody, for joining me again. Today's a special day. Let me get logistics out of the way right away. Uh, those of you who follow, have been following along the saga of the books, last Monday I did announce that from now on, all the books mailed out will be the second edition books with all the corrections made. And what you don't have to ask, that's what you're going to get. We have a few left, the first edition that had the errors. Some pages had two or three numbers on them. It was fascinating on top of each other. But you have to ask for those. If not, we're sending the, the new one and that'll work. And so another couple of things today, if you will go to JeannieRobertson.com, there's no I in Jeannie, of course, and we have the complete listing of all the theater shows. The question always is, is this show going to be on? I have my tickets or I wanted to come there. And the latest information will be put up by the Nashville people the day we get the new information. Lots of changes. Everybody's dealing with what they can. And at the same time, we're adding show after show after show for this time next year, next summer and spring. We're just all doing what we can, of course. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, Norma Rose will not be popping in today, unexpected. She is in the mountains. Last week, she didn't pop in unexpected. And I thought, what the, did I say something to her? And no, of course not. She was having lunch with a former football coach at Elon, who was here with his wife and his daughter, they had left Elon and gone somewhere else to a bigger school, but his daughter wanted to come back to Elon. So she had, had lunch with them last Saturday. So that, that didn't work. Next Saturday, uh, everybody on my team, except Tony is leaving me high and dry and it does not matter. We have it all worked out. Mr. Patrick Henry with the show them yourself, like the guy on that, that's it. He and his wife are going to the mountains. They are going with, um, the McKinney's and that's my backup people that do this. But Tony and I have learned how to do the uh, zoom thing or the camera. What's it called, Patrick? Facebook what Live. Facebook Live. But no, but down in my, with that camera that we put on my uh, computer downstairs, we are doing next Saturday show, not from the porch, but from my office. I have one week to get it in decent shape to show y'all. It's kind of an interesting place with lots of memorabilia that we're gonna share. So let's see, do we have any more announcements that we are lining up? Uh, yes, we put up, we've got two clips ready to go on YouTube. We'll put one of them up probably Monday and then wait a week and put up another one. And y'all have been very nice about not only laughing and enjoying them, but sending them to your buddies and we sure appreciate it. We have a special guest today, a friend of mine for years. And when I tell you who she is, if you haven't been following the announcements, uh, I think you're going to be quite excited. Although, of course, as I told her, uh, well, let me get her on camera and then I'll explain it to you. Will you welcome my friend, LaDonna Gatlin? Hey! <laughs> yes. and you are sitting at your what do you call that that's not a real piano that's your one of, you have a baby grand i know just a little keyboard just a little keyboard right okay because you're going to be doing some things for us that we want to have that key i have a tendency to look because our little show has gone from one cell phone to three cameras <laughs> and a gigantic jumbo TV thing where we can see people and watch it and see everybody can see what's going on. So we have grown. Um, LaDonna Gatlin is a person of many talents and has been well known. And y'all, she has been doing this since she was five years old. I know a lot of people say, oh no, I was speaking when I was in the blah, blah, blah. I was entertaining, blah, blah, blah. She has pictures, she has proof. And of course, people also know, and I, I've asked with her permission that I tell you this, 
She does have three brothers, and they've done okay also. They're the Gatlin <laughs> brothers, all the gold in Gatlin. You get tired of people saying that, LaDonna. I just may as well get it out of the way. All the gold, gold. <laughs> in California is in a bank in the middle of the hills. hills. And somebody else's dreams. If you're dreaming about California, it don't matter at all where you played before. California's a brand new game. All right. Yay. <laughs> Maybe we can get the whole. We have some secret buttons in here that we can punch and we can see the people who are watching the show. So maybe toward the end, we'll have to do it as a, a, a worldwide group scene. But when I said to them that a couple of things, I'm going to be honest with you. You, you know, what have you co-won an Emmy? You co-won a Grammy. You've done all of these things. You've done the top award given in the National Speakers Association. And that's where we met years ago, which we'll yes. tell them about. But I did get a few questions that I put into the smiley bucket that said, I didn't know the Gatlin brothers had a sister. I know. How many uh, do they have? Have you lived with this all your life? All my life. I just tell people I'm the black sheep of the family. I'm the best kept secret, but I am the Gatlin with the best legs. So okay. <laughs> no. and, and may I ask you just for the heck of it, because I know these questions are coming. I've read some of them in the bucket, but in the Gatlin family, LaDonna, Who's the best singer? I am. All right. <laughs> you. And, and no, okay, no, wait, let me, let me, uh, okay. So I have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, we, we are Larry, Steve, Rudy, LaDonna. So my mom had, that's the birth order. My mom had all four of us in a span of only six years. Uh, that is the ultimate practice of unsafe sex, if I've ever heard it in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and but you know Larry was always the driving force behind uh what we did well my mother was first of all because she was the church piano player so we went to church all the time and that's how we learned how to sing so uh that Larry kind of took on that role as the firstborn and you know the songwriter and he I have to say he paved the way for the rest of us I mean he went to Nashville first uh, he was selling his songs up and down Music Row, and you know he was a janitor in the to try to make a living, but you know peddling his songs on Music Row back in the day. So um, yeah, I have to give him all due credit. He's an incredibly gifted guy. But all of us kind of have our own style, so it's hard to say who the best singer is. But uh, we just we just all sang from from the womb, I, you know, because of your mama. Because of our that, mom. Do you yeah. have that picture that you said I can bring some pictures of? Yeah. Because yes. when you say that one of the Gatlin brothers was two years old when they were on stage, people okay. are not going to believe you yeah. until you might have that picture. You got I it? I do. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I don't have them. Don't have them. Yeah, here we go. I hope you can see this. So, and I hope it doesn't glare. All right. They must, can you see that? Yes. See those three little boys? Yes. Okay. Uh, so the shortest is Rudy. The one in the middle is Steve. And Larry's the tallest one. And my mother is the lady in the background on the piano. Rudy was two. Steve was four. Larry was six. And they're standing on a, a table so they can yeah. reach the microphone. See that? Just regular tables. Just a regular table, or kind of like. Where were you? Where were you? At, and this was at a talent show in Abilene, Texas. It's their first talent show, and I was a newborn. I was back with the babysitter. I mean, I was I was a newborn because Rudy was only two. So this, and that's my mom. Look how tired my mom looks. <laughs> <laughs> See, my mom. And these two gals, they were just uh, they were a duet of singers that were in the talent show as well. And they're just kind of looking on in the background, but. Yeah, mom Where did you there. appear? When did you appear to get to start? What what age did they let well, you on let's stage? See. Um, let's see, they they went, you know, here's the three little boys. Here we oh. go there. Then I was born and they called me princess. And oops, I dropped this. Hold on. Time out. 
Come back, please. Right, I, had, I lost it. Then I joined the group when I was like five. That's and amazing. this is, I can't see what I'm showing. That's the Gatlin Quartet. So you were the Gatlin Quartet. Right. And then by the time you were 10, you had five albums? Four. Something like that? Four, four. albums. Oh, I, forgot, I wish I hadn't mentioned it. Just four. Just four. One, two, three, <laughs> Four. That's school, pictures. school pictures. Other people, other people put their school pictures along the walls of the, well, the gap and have all of these other well, this, is what, this is what and when, when we were all at your house in January, and Patrick even said this when all the platform professionals were together and we were kind of having our annual meeting. Uh, Patrick, you said to me at one point, you said, Well, Donna, I swear you can just break out into song at any given moment. You know, somebody will say something and I'll just break out into song. That's all I ever knew. I That's call just, it musical Tourette's. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the it, gospel. Gospel was what they're known for. I also know before you get into some of the good gospel songs that you can write a little parody or a little funny song. And this, if they've never heard of Legatlin, this is not her regular thing here. But there's a piece of clothing that you have a song about. I wish you'd sing it. Well, Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I am. I'm wearing that piece of clothing right now. And uh, most of your ladies in the audience know what these are called. And uh, we wear them. And and as I get older, it's uh, you know friendship and friends are very important. But nothing sticks closer than a friend like this friend. And here it goes. And I. Never thought I'd look this way, but it's 60 plus years old, some things have sagged along the way, and I do believe I need you, and if you should ever go away, there was, I just forgot the word, I could never wear these pants that I am wearing here today, and so by the way, I thank you. I'll keep smiling, I'll keep shining, knowing I can always count on you, for sure. That's what spanks are for, <laughs> in firm times and flab times, you'll be on my thighs forevermore. That's what spanks are for. Where you came and saw in me the firmer woman I could be. And so, by the way, I love you. And then, for the times when we're apart, I can breathe again and finally get some blood up to my heart. But still, please don't ever leave me. I'm sweaty. I'm dizzy, I'm about to burst like a balloon. Real soon, that's what Spanx will do. I'm desperate, God help me peel these down and take them off before I go on the floor. That's what Spanx are for. Not your typical gospel song. No, <laughs> I love it. Let me let me ask you. Well, I'm going to get to their questions too, but I want to ask you one. Do you remember when we met? I remember exactly when we met. I do. At the National Speakers Association. Yes. And I was in awe. You were in awe of me? <laughs> you don't even, you don't realize who you were, who you are, for crying out loud. You're Jeannie Robertson. <laughs> Well, I, I mentioned this yesterday. Well, thanks, but we both know. Uh, sometimes the fame we have within the National Speakers Association does not extend to the world. We just speakers know each other. And you, somebody grabbed my arm in the hall and said, I want you to meet. Come here, Jeannie. This is a new person that has come to NSA, National Speakers Association. Right. And then she turned as though you were sort of out of, and she said, it's LaDonna Gatlin. And I said, okay, because I, Swanee, 
I wasn't, I didn't connect you with your brothers. I just, she was introducing me to somebody and she said, Gatlin, Jeannie. And you said, <laughs> you don't need to tell my last name when you introduce me to somebody. And you've always, I've heard you say that a thousand times. And, uh, but yet I'll do it. I'll say, we're having La Gatlin, La Donna oh, Gatlin. I and, and so then I turned to you and I said, I'm Deanie Roberts. <laughs> we both started laughing. And since then, that had to be, that had to be 20 years ago. Oh, at least. Yeah. Yeah. It was early on in my speaking career for sure. But I remember going to that conference and I just, I literally sat, I sat in the back because I just, I wanted to take in the whole thing and they had the big screens and just such great production. And of course I'd seen great production before I'd been a part of all that, but I saw people stand up on the stage and, and just with their words, make such an impact on folks. And I thought, you know, I know how to sing. I know how to interpret a song and, and make an impact. But for people to stand up there and, and do it as speakers, I thought yes. this is a craft that's completely different than what I know how to do. And I saw great speakers like you that I, I yeah. emulated. And I thought, my goodness, I knew, I knew I've got a lot to learn. I mean, simply put, my family taught me how to sing, but the National Speakers Association taught me how to speak because I went to the conventions and I saw folks like you and just all the greats. And so I, yeah. I took good notes and tried to be, I was just a sponge, you know, taking it all in. Well, everybody's got different talents. If I could sing a nth like you sing, I might've been Miss America. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think so, you've done all right. I, I know, I, I'm having a good time. All right, here's a question. Okay, okay this is from Mary Gray. LaDonna, were you ever part of the boys' creative process? And if so, did they give you public credit for it? I was. Uh, we sang all of our lives. I mean, from the time we were little bitty, as I showed you in those uh, albums and stuff. Then Larry went to Nashville in the 70s, started making his way uh, among country music artists. Dottie West gave him his his uh, beginning. And, and Johnny Cash, some of those guys opened their hearts to him. And Larry really paved the way and brought us in. I was still in high school. And we would, you know, my brothers, my other two brothers, Steve and Rudy and I would go to Nashville on the weekends and be in the recording studio. And we made, I made their first, uh, what, two or three records with them. The Broken Lady album. She's a broken lady. Some of y'all probably remember that one. And, and I was on that one. But then uh, I got married. And uh, even though I married a guy that was a piano player and my, my family was thinking, oh, great. If she's got to get married, you know, at least she's going to marry somebody that's useful to the group. You know, he can be a piano player in the group. And we toured with him for a while. And then we just really, you know, there's just that little mm, yearning in you or that little still small voice or whatever you want to call it that says, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. And I tell people, we, Tim and I, my husband, Tim and I, will be married 46 years in December. Uh, we just felt like we had a different song to sing. So my brothers went on and did their thing and I went on and did mine. And I tell folks, they went on to produce hit records. I went on to produce two babies. My brothers got famous. I got stretch marks, but it's all, <laughs> all, all very much because I had a different no, song to tell sing. Them about the first ones to tell you that. So I have heard you tell the story. Um, you can condense it if you want, but how you and, Tim really fell for each other there and and in Nashville. Yeah, well, yeah. Tim was living with his brother and his wife for us and we had a summer job and I was living with Larry and his wife Janice and Tim and I met in Nashville we were singing with a group called the Blackwood Singers and it was just for a summer a summer gig we were in between college semesters and that was the way it was going to be and but within the group there was this hard and fast rule no dating no, because no hanky panky on the bus. We traveled in with those big 40 foot customized bus, no dating within the bus. Okay. So we knew that was, that was a hard and fast rule, but we were really crazy about each other. And it was pretty obvious to the owner of the group's wife, Donna Blackwood. She could just see that we were crazy about each other. So we were at a gig up in Winnipeg, uh, Canada. We were there for like two weeks we had like three shows a night and the, the band was all guys. Tim was the piano player. There was a bass player, a drummer, and they all roomed in one room. I roomed with the babysitter and then Donna and Winston had their room, uh, hotel rooms. 
And Donna just took it upon herself because she saw that we were, like I said, crazy about each other. And she wrote a note to Tim and she said, dear Tim, it's some really crazy thing. I can stand it no longer. I must kiss your beautiful lips. Meet me in between the first and second show in the hallway, blah, 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 blah. And she signed it, LaDonna. And she put it under his hotel room door. Well, she did the same thing. Dear LaDonna said the same thing, signed it from Tim, slipped it under my hotel room door. <laughs> so we both got these notes. We did the first show that night. So after the first show, we we're kind of looking for each other in the hallway here, you know, and we found each other and, you know, we just started making out like crazy. You know, we were just kissing, and, you know, carrying on. And finally, we just stood there and we're like, well, what do we do now? And I said, well, I don't know. You're the one that wrote the note. And Tim <laughs> said, I didn't write the note. You wrote the note. <laughs> and I said, no, I didn't write the note. And so we figured out that, indeed, it was Donna Blackwood who had wrote the note. She had played Cupid big time. And uh, that yeah. was uh, 40, 46 years ago in May. So here we are. Thank you, Donna. She must, she must have known what she was to do in her scene. <laughs> All right, let's ask a few questions because you got some good ones. Okay. Uh, loved it when the Gatlin brothers had their theater in Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach was where I have a place at the Apache campground. What, oh. Did you go to Myrtle Beach to the uh, theater down there when they had their theater? I did. Yeah, I, I went and did uh, some Christmas shows with them back in uh, 95, 96. Yeah, it was a great, great theater. Great I was going then. Oh, I'll be darned. You never, you never came over and appeared at the Apache campground. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were. <laughs> That's okay. All right. And here's a question from uh, Ruth Ann Crittenden Donnell. Ruth Ann Crittenden Donnell. Donna lives. Oh, LaDonna lives in the same 55. Oh, this is not to be good. Same 55 plus community as we do. Is that in Frisco or somewhere like yes. that? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Although I have never met her. She has been leading a privacy in her lawn on Sunday mo mornings during the pandemic. That's the violation of your um, homeowners association. Shh, it didn't happen. Thank no. you. It didn't happen, but she no. will let you if you drive by no. on Sunday. No, Ruth we, I tell you what, it happened very organically on Easter. So we live in a 55 and older community. All, you know, our homes are very close together. We have wonderful neighbors. We love living here. And uh, Easter Sunday morning, it was a beautiful morning. And I opened up the doors and the windows and there's a baby grand piano right over there. And I'm married to a guy that can just play the heck out of that thing. And so he got up that Sunday morning and started playing, you know, I don't know, Christ the Lord is risen today, whatever. And it just went out, you know, and, and our neighbors had told us when they'd walk by, we love to hear Tim play the piano, whatever. So he was playing that that Easter morning. And my neighbors, I started getting these texts from text messages from our neighbors. They're like, oh, that sounds great. Can we bring our lawn chair down and listen? And I'm like, sure. So you know, they brought their lawn chairs down and sat in our driveway. And so we've, we've been doing that ever since Easter Sunday morning. Now okay. we set up, set up a sound system. We take this little keyboard and we're kind of out up in the garage. And then they, they sit out on the driveway. They pull up in their golf carts and bring their lawn chairs. And it's just great. They're a wonderful community. Wonderful folks. We love Well, them. and they're lucky to have your talent that you're willing to give. People here pay me not to sing. <laughs> My neighbors, my neighbors, I've pulled out my ukulele many times and tried to sit out there. Well, I tell you and what, Jeannie, anytime you want to come and bring your ukulele, we will make a spot for you on our drive. You have to know more than four chords. Okay. <laughs> Not really. Okay, yes, this is one. Music is three chords in the truth, so I think you can <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Lynette Eason Dunn. Okay, I'm from California and had always wanted to go to the Grand Old Opry. So I took my teenage boys and we were at the Ryman on mm -hmm. Thursday night before it got shut down by COVID. The oh. Gatlin brothers, your brothers, sang that song and that would be all the gold in California. And the entire auditorium sang along. It was amazing. That's got sure. to make them feel good and you too. Yeah, I, that's Opry Country Classics and they host that every Thursday night that they're in town. And I, I've been there to see it and it's Pretty it's well, me. You to the rhyming too. You know what a sacred well, is. I was on the next week. The, oh no, I was on in April supposedly, and then of course I humorous without an audience at all. It's a little bit tough. 
Of course, that's what we're doing here today. You don't hear anybody laugh. But anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you, Patrick. I appreciate it. Okay, what we're going to do is ask one more, and then we're going to um, see. See, some of them are asking for some. Will she sing? Now, this is not this is not planned. Will she sing? That this is Betty Sporrell, S P O E R L. Will she sing a little bit of the Tennessee waltz for this Tennessee girl? Can you do that? Wait just a minute. Let me get the. I, I was what? Well, gotta get the record. I was walking with my daughter to the Tennessee walls when an old friend I happened to me hmm. introduced her. To my darling, and while they were dancing, my friend stole my sweetheart from me. I remember the night in the Tennessee woods, and now I know just how much I have. Yeah, I lost my little darling The night they were playing The beautiful Tennessee walls Oh, wow. All the years I wasted in piano. <laughs> I can't do anything. <laughs> Thank That's, you for I, I, I watched you watch it, looking for the chord. That was, that was, you know what? Something else you were, were talking to me one time, and it must have been 10 years ago. I don't know. But we were talking about holidays, uh -huh. and you were saying that y'all were, you had Thanksgiving one time in um, Tennessee. In and uh, I'll le lead you to tell this story. I'm not going to tell your story, <laughs> but you you don't understand the world that you grew up in. It's like um, you could say, did you did you play sports all, every weekend? And well, we were traveling every week. You know, we were performing every weekend. But you said that uh, you were having Thanksgiving dinner at Larry Gatlin's place. Y'all's the whole family. Right. Oh, well. Right. And when we got there, somebody said, oh, there's another couple coming. And then, of course, y'all said, well, who? And they said, uh, it's Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash. Like, I would say, go get some more butter. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean, Johnny Cash? And, and, and not, well, listen to the emphasis on this name. And June Carter Cash, because the Carters were the ones that were uh, way back. Yeah. And oh, then you me. told me. Something that happened there, and you were maybe a teenager or something well, like no, that. Actually, this was, uh, oh gosh, I guess this would have been the early 80s, and I was already married and I had already left the group. Uh, Tim and I had already moved back to Texas, so we were back in Nashville, you know, for the holiday, for the Thanksgiving holiday. And Larry had a big place out uh, in south of Nashville, Brentwood, about 82 acres and a big old log cabin house. It was just, you know, one of those Tennessee wonderful places, kind of heaven on earth. And so Johnny and Jean were coming for lunch. And that was, you know, unbeknownst to me until somebody said, well, they're coming. So the doorbell rang and, you know, it was the caches and Larry and Janet welcomed them in. And Janet, Larry's wife, uh, looked at me and she said, hey, LaDonna, I've, I've got something in the oven. Would you please uh, help Miss June? Just show Miss June uh, where uh, the powder room is so she can kind of freshen up. So I have to kind of back up here and tell you it was freezing cold, you know, Thanksgiving time, November in Nashville. And when they came to the door, they both had on these huge fur coats. And then Miss June had on a fur hat. I mean, I kid you not, it was it was the size, it was like the size of Wisconsin. It was huge. It was this huge hat. And that's back in the day when everybody wore real fur you know and so when janice said just you know she'll want to she'll want to freshen up because they were just off an airplane they had just flown in they had had a gig the night before somewhere else so they just flown into nashville showed up at larry's doorstep 
Janice is going to get something out of the oven. Larry takes Johnny off in the, you know, and they're over playing guitars or whatever. So I take Miss June up to the master uh, bathroom to just show her this is where you can, you know, kind of freshen up. So, and I had met her before because we had done, the Gatlins had done a couple of things back when I had still been with the brothers. We'd done a couple of, of events with them together. So, you know, she knew of me, at least. She knew I was a little sister. So I took her up to the bathroom and, and I'm just going to, you know, back out and say, here you are, Miss June, just make yourself at home. And she goes, oh no, darling, just come on in here with me. Let's just talk. Well, I just got to freshen up. I'm just going to put on the lipstick, blah, 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 whatever. So I'm in there sitting, just going, okay, I'm in the bathroom with June Carter K. <laughs> and she pulls off this huge fur hat and she has pink sponge curlers in her hair. <laughs> <laughs> And she just, she never misses a beat. She doesn't, this is nothing new to her. She just starts unwinding those things. And you know, the woman had beautiful hair, long, gorgeous hair. And she just started unwinding those things and just talk, well, you know, tell me about what you've been doing and how's life been. And, you know, she's just doing this. And, play, and she bends over and you kind of puffs her head up, puts a little lipstick on the makeup. And we're just, she never misses a beat. And then she just says, okay, well, I'm done. I'm hungry. Let's eat. <laughs> I can't believe it. Thanks, Sandra. We've all had them. We've all had them. Well, so. and, and what you need to understand is I was not, I was not in the midst. I mean, I was a part of all that, but for a very short time. But these were the people that the brothers just hung out with by virtue of of the music. I mean, if um, I mean, I think of of people like like the Mannings, like. Uh, uh, Peyton Manning and Eli Manning. I mean, for them to throw a football around is like the Gatlins standing around singing a song. I mean, it's just, it's part of who yeah. we are, part of our DNA. It's just the, it's the family that I was born into. I didn't have anything to do with it. You know, the good Lord just gave me the parents that he did and the family that he did. And I happened to get to go along for the ride. So what a Well, deal. you're still, you're still going because you are an excellent speaker. And all right. <laughs> Here's Helen Bear. She's won things here before too. So which brother do you confide in the most? Uh, None of them. Well, it's at, at different stages of my life. Right now, uh, our dad is 93 years old. Our mom passed away three years ago. So I guess I really, I talked to Rudy the most because I'm usually talking and calling about, you know, how's dad doing and that kind of thing. And Rudy uh, is single. So uh, he has the, he's the one, they all take great care of my dad. And of course we have caregivers that come in all the time, but Rudy probably spends the most one-on-one -on -one time with my dad because he lives right around the corner from him. So I would say probably Rudy at that point, but uh, at different times, different ones of them in my life. Of course, you know, big brothers, you know, little sisters, they always feel like they can count on big brothers. <laughs> Did They're they get at that point? <laughs> okay. Here, let me get another one. Another question. And this is from Carol Busby. Mm -hmm. Did your brothers check out any of your dates before they could <laughs> date you? The bane of my existence. They wouldn't let me date any of their friends. No. Wow. I could they wouldn't let me. They're like, no, you're not dating our little sister. So I, it's amazing. I had to leave home to find Tim. Find Tim. <laughs> and to get away from all of them. They were very you're, good. I know that you're known for the gospel because we've got people in here. Um, they want Old Rugged Cross. They want Amazing Grace. They want sure. songs like that. And I know you don't have time to sing all of them. But you also, I have seen you walk out on stage and do a set of songs from a, an era that mm -hmm. were not religious. Uh, so, so the singers, who did you really like their music? What, you know, the people like that. Well, I really have a wide range and I, I tell people this all the time. When I get to heaven, I hope I get to live next door to Patsy Cline and Rosemary Clooney. I mean, those are my two. You know, I love everything from country like nobody can do. Crazy. Crazy for feeling so lonely. I'm crazy for crying and crazy for trying. And I'm crazy for loving you. And then I love Rosemary Clooney. Gonna take a sing, baby, 
gonna put my heart at ease. Gonna make a sentimental journey. Sentimental journey home. Seven. And that's the time we leave at seven. I'll be waiting up for heaven. Counting every mile of railroad track. And it takes me back. And see, I could just go on and on and on. Yeah. So, I love, I mean, in high school, I loved uh, Karen Carpenter, you know? Yeah. We've only just begun to live widely some promises, all those, and yeah, everything. I love, um, <laughs> I love country music because it tells a story and I don't think any genre, I may get in trouble here for saying this, but in my opinion, I think country music is maybe the genre of music that tells a story best, you know? Oh, I think so. Yeah. I love a song that tells a story. All right, here we go. Another question. This is from Karen Dickrell. Say a joyful hi to LaDonna from her friends in Wisconsin yes. and the Joy Conference. Yes. Did you do a Joy Conference? She yeah, was a great that. presenter. I think I followed you there. You did it two or three years before I did, and I did it once, and then I, we tried to go back, and I don't I don't know if they're having it anymore, but I'd love to come back. Hi, Karen. Okay. Great to see. Great to hear from you. Obviously, <laughs> have a lot of material, LaDonna. So let me see if we got it. Okay. Um, Karen Proctor Barwick question for Donna, which one of your brothers picked on you the most and which one was the most sensitive? Oh gosh. Did well, your I, mother let him do that? I, Daddy didn't let him pick on me. He really didn't. Cause he, he called me princess and made sure they treated me like one. Cause after three boys and then getting a girl, I mean, my dad oh, yeah. had a pink ribbon in my hair before I was an hour old. So, but I, I have to give Rudy credit again. Rudy used to play dolls with me because I, I didn't have any sisters. I didn't, you know, there were always guys in the house. So I know he appreciates you telling that. Yeah, thank you, Rudy, for playing dolls. With <laughs> okay. <me. laughs> right, then LaDonna, did you play basketball or sports like Jeannie? By the way, I adore your name, LaDonna. Mine is Donna Norris. Okay. Um, How did you, you couldn't play sports. You were I busy. Well, I didn't really didn't really have time. I was always doing something musically. Now, now the brothers all played. They played baseball, football, and I love baseball and football to this day because I went to their games. But, you know, sometimes they'd play a game and then we'd have to get in the car and race to make it to a concert an hour or two away. Hey, LaDonna, tell them what happened at the World's Fair. <laughs> How old were y'all? You were... You Okay, I was 10, so we're basically 10, 12, 14, and 16, you know, it kind of stair step. And my mom, like I said, all credit due to both my mom and dad. I mean, my dad was the disciplinarian, and my mom was the musical, softer side of things. And, and we needed both, you know, we needed dad's discipline and mom's heart. And uh, we were at the World's Fair as tourists. We were just there to see it, because we were doing concerts all up and down, you know, in our little, we had a, a gold Rambler station wagon and we pulled a trailer behind it with our sound equipment and our records, you know. So here we are at the World's Fair and I don't, there was a little stage outside one of the pavilions that was uh, the, uh, for lack of a better word, I want to call it the, like the Bible pavilion or the pavilion where all kinds of denom different denominations had booths in there. And there was a stage outside and there was a piano and an organ and a microphone and there were some people singing there. And I do not know how my mom found this guy, but she found some guy standing on the side there that looked like he was in charge. And she went up to him and said, look, i got four youngins that can sing anybody off that stage up there. You better let them do it. And he did. So we sang at the World's Fair, thanks to my mom. <laughs> okay. She, mom. But she didn't sound like a mean, typical stage mom that was on the movie. She just wanted, she knew y'all had talent. Well, okay, let me see. Yeah. What we got, this is crazy. I, we, I know I have a bunch that want certain songs. Okay. Sandra Boozer. Question for Jeannie. I'm from a town about 20 miles from Auburn, but I'm an Alabama fan. I live in South Carolina. Why did you choose to go to Auburn? This is obviously not about you. No, <laughs> I wanted to go to the best large university there was. If I had wanted to go a smaller one, a best one, I would have gone to Elon University, but I went to Auburn. 
And the fact that my grandparents lived in Auburn, my parents met at Auburn Mail, maybe that was it too. But there you go. But you y'all pull up those Texas schools, I'm sure. But all right, here's another question. Where are the ones? Okay. Do you ever wish you could have traded your brothers for the Mandrell sisters? <laughs> Sometimes there were times I wish I could trade. Well, her name is Mary Gaither. <laughs> her name is Mary Gaither. What did you say? I interrupted you. I said there were days that I wish I could trade my brothers for anybody else. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. There weren't many of those. No, I guess if I could, uh, if I could have had sisters, I would have loved to have been one of the Lennon sisters. I loved the love the Lennon sisters and. I remember uh, I would sit, you know, this close to the television on with my nose in the TV on Saturday nights and wait for the Lawrence Welk show to come on because I wanted to see the Lennon sisters. I wanted to see their hair and what they wore and how they sang and what they sang because I would sit there and think, this is what my life would be like if only my mom had had all girls, you know? So <laughs> that was sort of my- uh, <laughs> You'd be on the Lawrence Welk show. <laughs> my dream to be. And then later on, I got to got to sing with the Lennon sisters on the Tell show. Tell about that. Home. They can watch this. You you directed me to this because you were, yeah. it was completely ad-libbed with what happened in its own, um, it's on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. Yeah. LaDonna, I see youtube.com slash LaDonna okay. Gavin Sings. So yeah. yeah. Well, let's tell them what happened. So we were doing a taping, uh, Larry's, let's see, Ken Folk's Country Reunion. And my brother Larry called me a couple of weeks before and said, you know, we're going to do this taping and it's all about Ken Folk's and families within country music and how they got started. And of course, many of them got started in gospel music like we did. So they invited me to come up and do it. And uh, the producer of the show called and said, LaDonna, uh, we want you to sing a solo at, at this taping. And I'm like, oh, well, fun. That'd be great. Of course, I was going to sing with my brothers as well, but they wanted me to sing something by myself. And just a few weeks before that phone call, uh, Andy Williams had passed away. And uh, I never got, I love to watch Andy's show because I just love the way he sang. And I never got to go to Branson to his uh, theater up there. I think you've been there to the Moon River Theater. Uh, but I didn't get to go to that, but I just loved Andy and he had just passed away. So I told this producer, I said, I know this isn't a country song, but I would love to sing Moon River, just kind of as a tribute to Andy Williams. And he said, well, I think that's a great idea. So we got to the taping, you know, did the sound check, whatever. And I'm singing Moon, Moon River. But what I did not realize is that the Lennon sisters were actually on that taping and I did not know that they were going to be there. So, I mean, we'd done sound check that morning and I got to say hello to them. I had met them previously in Branson at my brother's theater a, a few Christmases before, but I did not expect them to be there. And so, you know, we're doing in the middle of the song and my brother Larry calls them down to say, you know, come sing this with us. And so the girls, it was um, Janet and Kathy and their little sister, uh, Mimi. And they came down and started singing, singing with me. And, and boy, it was sounded really good. I mean, we didn't even have the right microphones. We were passing microphones around because the producers didn't know this was going to happen. And so the girls took it from there. And I said something to my brothers I've always wanted to say. I looked at Larry and I said, you go stand over there. We'll take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> And it you do, good. and it's on that clip that y'all sang great. out. It was great fun. I, I would, you know, I'd love to be a Lennon sister. So if they ever need a substitute, I'll volunteer. They're great and wonderful ladies. And it was Moon River? Yep. Yeah. Moon River, wider than a mile. I'm crossing you in style someday. You do. Wherever you're going, I'm going your way. Two drifters off to see the world. There's such a lot of world to see. We're after the same.
It's a lot better with the Linen Sisters singing with me. No, <laughs> no, it is. They couldn't be here today. <laughs> let me let me tell you something that you might not know. Patrick usually sings, and he's not going to sing today because we've got so many things on the agenda. He had a pop up show Thursday night, didn't you? I heard noise down here on my own porch. He's having a show. But um, you wrote a song, didn't you? Co co author a song with uh, Larry Gatlin. <laughs> Tell it, Patrick. Well, Tell we it. Have, we have the microphone real quick. Okay, here. So, LaDonna, when I was about 22 years old, I just moved to Nashville. And so, when I was about 22 years old, I just moved to Nashville and had um, found myself at an event where Larry Gatlin was in attendance. And I was just um, in awe. And so we had spoken briefly. And so he was performing for the group and he, he made a comment about, um, he said, you know, when I was about this guy's age, I was sitting in a room like this with Johnny Cash and he started naming Dottie West all, and Johnny Cash would turn to me, hand me the guitar and say, take it kid. And he turned to me, handed me the guitar and said, take it kid. And I froze. <laughs> but then I ended up playing a song that I'd written, um, called um, Shoulders of Giants. Mm -hmm. And so the last line of the song was the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So I'd given him one of my demo tapes with the song on it. And then um, a couple weeks later, I got a call. Patrick, this is Larry Gatlin. Listen to your song. I think it's great. I think you ought to change the last word to the rest is up to me. And then he hung up. And so then <laughs> from then on, I said, I wrote this song with Larry Gatlin. <laughs> No, yes. Perfect. All right, we're going to quickly, LaDonna, I'm going to quickly give, um, I'm going to give things away here. You we want to throw something in the pot? Sure. A, a book and a CD. Yep. Okay. Or either or both, whatever. Okay. And um, you can do that, but we give the people the choice. Here's our big bag of of things if you have questions. So pull, pull two names out there well either way okay, pull their website up too because i've got a i've got a couple i wanted to ask so many questions all right this is a winner right here donna wall okay donna wall has won a prize she can select Ladonna's book Ladonna's cd patrick's cd or my raw dvd or my brand new book there you go all right, and that's Donna Wall. But Donna, you have to get in touch with us so we'll know where to send it. This sure. is a, a, an ongoing little effort here. Tony listen. Tony, listen. Tony's back there. Yeah, Tony. Tony at Jeannie Robertson. See, that's so clever. Tony at Jeannie Robertson. Here's another winner. This is my response to somebody, so I shall throw that in there. That was from me. All right, here you go. And the winner is Donna Cunning, Cunningham. Well, the Donnas are winning today. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> it's all fixed. <laughs> no, this is, I cut these pieces of paper up myself. But you can see the table back there. All right. That's a, their choice right there. Tell them to email the email the address at the bottom of the screen. Oh, the email the address at the bottom of the screen. Tony with an I. If you want if you won and she has your name, you tell her what you want. We'll let you know uh, what to send us, LaDonna. Okay, Ruth Ann McNair. You are a winner, Ruth Ann McNair. M-C-N-A-I-R. Goes back in the box. You never know. And let's do another one, too. Come on right here. And um, LaDonna, what's your favorite song? Oh, uh probably amazing grace amazing grace yeah you know what i brought you i asked you i didn't pay you i know i didn't pay you but i paid for your tickets i'm still waiting for that check by the way no. i know it and i don't know what happened to it but uh, i was named the um this area's boy scout man of the year mm -hmm. and they thought it was funny and i did too but that was a fundraiser yeah. And you had a banquet and people paid big bucks to come. And the one that had been named the man of the year could select the speaker, the MC, and someone to give the invocation. 
So uh, I call LaDonna and ask you to come all the way from Texas and sing Amazing Grace for the invocation. Mm -hmm. And I'll do a little bit of it. I'd love to. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound It saved a wretch like me was lost but now I'm found I was blind but now I see you brought the house they were so quiet I asked Ty Boyd from Charlotte North Carolina to MC and then I had left with selecting the speaker from all of my friends do you remember who I selected uh, I do I accepted myself and gave no. I said, well, I'm going to make some of my friends upset that I didn't choose them or for having to do a free speech. And I said, I'll just do it myself. I won't mess it up. Barbara Martin has just won, too. Also, Tony, Barbara <laughs> Martin. That's four minutes. I thought it was five. I thought it was a bunch. I'll have to look at the tape and figure it out. So just to, if you think your name got called, contact Tony. It's a little slipshod sometime here. Just a little bit. Okay, Debbie Shea, S-H-E-A. You have won your choice uh, from all of the options here. So that'll work. Now, we're, we're running out of time a little bit, and I have so many questions in here. Here's one of them. Um, Teresa Randall, click. Oh, no, this is a question. Did they ever let you sing on stage with them now? You yes, feel in for them, I know. Again, again, I'm the I'm kind of the replacement when somebody's sick or has laryngitis or you know it's getting getting laryngitis <laughs> throat, throat worked on or something like that. And what's really funny is uh, we don't even we don't even have to practice. I mean, last time I did something, Larry had some throat stuff done, and actually. It ended up being a, a, a crazy thing. It was a benefit down at Texas A&M. And I, Larry just called and said, this is a benefit. And I, I can't sing because I'm going to have some throat surgery and I won't be able to sing then. Can you just come sing like three songs with Rudy and Steve? And I'm like, sure. So we'll be at Texas A&M, blah, 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 on this date in October. And I got there and realized that it was the One America Appeal benefit concert uh, benefiting Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, the victims of Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Maria, and the five living presidents were there oh. on the front row. And I got to meet all of them, President Clinton, Obama, the two Bushes, and Jimmy Carter. And, and this oh. is just something that Larry said, hey, can you come sing with us? I won't be able to sing. I, and once again, this is the family I was born into. So I'm the stunt singer and, you know, just jumped in there. And <laughs> Rudy sang Larry's part and I sang Rudy's part and Steve got to sing his part. So it turned out pretty good. <laughs> well, y'all, uh, your mama knew what she was doing. Now, your mama knew so what she was doing. Right. They right. We, our parents raised us right. We were very, very blessed. Had wonderful parents. And we still got our dad. Listen, speaking of your parents, Glenna Power Ozer, of all the Gatlin children, which one will you say was your mama's favorite? <laughs> I would say me. These people are tough. <laughs> I would say me because I'm her only girl. Uh, I, Because I, I, mom and I were really close. So I... She was after three boys. I think she's pretty happy to get a girl. You know, we were very, very close. I miss my mom. She's a great lady. Okay. She just died a couple of years ago. Don't you? I remember? Yeah. 17. Yeah. She passed. 17. All right. We're running out of time and I have a great idea for a big, y'all have sent so many. I was just wondering if like a few months passed and we were still doing this and all, if you might come back again, I don't want to put you on the spot. You can just think about it. Of course. I'd be happy to. Oh, good. It's great. I watch it every Saturday anyway, so what? I'm going to hang out with you anyway. Okay. This is great. Where's Tim? Isn't Tim that you're, you're a company in the over there next to the, the baby he's grand? Over here. He's Wave over your here. hand, Tim. You're, I know you dressed up for it. No, he's, no, he's not. He passed you know, by a while ago. You can hear me. 
you, honey. Hello. I can hear you, but I ain't going. He's ignoring. <laughs> He's ignoring. Hey, Tim. Tim, what do you think is her favorite song? She said Amazing Grace. What What's her least favorite? Anything I ever wrote. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I understand. Anything he ever wrote. I, I so, wrote. what do you think about this for a grand, uh, a grand ending? Um, they love all the gold in California, of course, and they would like to sing it worldwide. And we do have a way to reverse it and see these people. And right now, some of you need to be sitting up if you don't mind. But I would like maybe we'll end on that because it's a little peppier. Yeah. And uh, I would love it if you would sing Let There Be Peace on Earth. I would be happy to sing that. You want me to do that first? Or all yeah. the gospel? Yep. Peace on Earth? She's asking which song. Yes. Let, yeah. Let's do that one first. Okay. One of the, such a great song. And boy, does our country ever need it now. We all need it every day. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as our Father. Everybody sit up straight, pull your stomachs in, get your diaphragms ready to sing. Pitch this so I can join in here, LaDonna. We're going to do all the gold. We're going to work our way out. And I really appreciate you coming. And the pleasure uh, has been all let, mine. Okay, well, I, I just like to introduce some of my friends to my other friends. And uh, you took some busy time out, and I appreciate it. Oh, my do you pleasure. know Charles Barkley? <laughs> do you know Charles Barkley? Do you, know Charles Barkley? I don't know who it is. you I never heard of Charles Barkley, bass yeah. singer? Yeah, have you ever heard of Charles Barkley? Oh, no, I'm thinking the basketball player. I'm well, sorry. that's who it is. Well, I, I can't get in touch with him. So if you know anybody who knows anybody who's got a cousin, <laughs> you were my big get, but one day I'm going to talk to Charles <laughs> Barkley. <laughs> Oh, All right, you, you're in trouble, girl. <laughs> I know it. you. You need to uh, lead us, and we'll go on out, and y'all will be next Saturday with no one here, but Tony and myself. We're gonna be down in the office, and we're gonna show. I got a great idea from Ladonna there. I'm gonna show you some old pictures. Hair, I had the biggest I'll, afro you've ever seen. I'll be sitting there. I'll be. I'll be waiting on the other end. I can't wait to see him. It's always fun mm -hmm. to hang out with you. So are we doing? Gonna go out to all the. Thank gold? you, Lavana. Yes. Yep. Here we go, everybody. Every all the gold in California, in California is in louder of Beverly Hills. Somebody else is saying about California. California. It don't matter at all where you play 
Yeah. Bye, y'all. See you next week. She's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson. Oh, she's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson.